Are you still with me? Previous, it is still man. Who, we are not here. We are still on project man. One member of the, that's why it took the council to decide upon man. One member of the Godhead had created man. We were not told how he did it. Because the word there is bara, to bring into existence out of no raw material. I want to think, think, this is me thinking, all right? I want to think that that aspect of man came from God. I want to think so. And the reason why I want to think so is because at the pilgrimage of man, every part of his makeup will go back to where it was drawn from. Let's try again. Every part of your makeup will go to where it came from. So if this one came from the dust, and then the other one that was not created out of any raw material, the Bible reveals in the book of Ecclesiastes that it will go back to God. That means it came from there. So in Genesis chapter 2 verse 5, we find another member of the Godhead stepping out of that quadrant to come into the physical frame of reference. And he began an act of modeling. Uh, it might interest you to know that the word for man, the word that was used, and God formed man, the word formed is engineering. But when the word formed for woman is artistic. But I don't have time to work it out. <laughs> now, <laughs> now listen, listen. And that's why if you are married, you are a married woman here, don't get angry with your husband and attempt to hit him. He's, he's engineering, we're made of iron rods. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> Let me not go there. <laughs> so the Bible says that God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Jehovah Elohim, which is the pre-incarnate identification of Jesus Christ. By the time we go to the New Testament, you will see that Jesus was actually in the adventure. In the enterprise of creation, you will see it's registered there. All right? So he formed man out of the dust of the ground. It's the first time God is trying to bring a material dimension into the framework of man. When he did that, then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The implication of that breath was that man became an entity that was alive in his soul. The soul happens to be your seat of intelligence. The soul happens to be the seat of your memory. The soul happens to be the faculty with which you process things. The soul is, is the organ that gives you capacity to interact with your physical environment. So I want you to understand that the investment that God made available into this object that was modeled, lifeless on the ground, the investment that God made available that made this entity a creature that had the intelligence, requisite intelligence, to interact with the physical domain in which he was domiciled was the breath of God. This is the first level. That's why I asked the question, what air do you breathe? In order for God to translate that lifeless entity that was formed from the dust and to give it sustainability and intelligence. It was by the breath of God. The breath into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But if, it's that, if that's all you have, unfortunately, you are not the full picture of the idea that God had when he wanted to fructify Project Man. Because if you are following my teaching, you will find that only two members of the Godhead have acted on man so far. And unfortunately for us, the project man was hijacked only after two members of the Godhead had acted upon him. The third member ne never worked on him, unfortunately. The Holy Spirit never had the opportunity to do his own work on that project. The implication of that was that man 
was innocent. Adam was innocent, but Adam was not righteous. Adam did not have the nature of God. Adam had the nature of man. Are you with me? And the blueprint for the not creation have. of man was a creature that had capacity to function in the image of God, not in the image of man. Oh, you're not here. A creature that will function in the likeness of God. He will function like God, not like man. It means that the reference for man was God and not man. That means when this creature is created, the way he will know if he's functioning well is that he will need to consult with God. This creature is supposed to be operating like God even though he is called man. There should be something in him that will give him access to operating in the realm of civilization that God is domiciled. But at this time, man had only received the work of two members of the Godhead. He was still man of man. He was not yet man of God. And in order to make the Holy Spirit's activity user-friendly to man, what God did was that he put the dimensions of the Spirit in a fruit. So that if man eats of the tree of the fruit of life, are you here? He will now become born again. He will now have the life of God. And then... The visitations of God to him will equip him as to how to function from the operating system of that life and not from the operating system of human life. Are you there? Stay with me, stay with me. So, an educational system was set in place to begin to enlighten.